Hi there, I'm Nam the Moonhog. I live in the happy little town of Larrick Tab in the Irofalak region, born and raised here. I'm not like most hedgehogs out there. You could say I'm creative, though that's not always a good thing. You see, when I was about 12, I designed a super powerful ghost and with the help of a friend, brought my character to life. The thing is, however, I designed him to be evil. In hindsight, I have no idea why I did that. He destroyed the equipment we used to make him, and for the longest time I had no idea as to where he had gone. About a year later, I discovered my true potential, and I don't mean like singing or drawing. I found out that I have abilities, other than just rolling into a ball. I discovered this when I found a strange blue stone in the shape of a heart. Finding this stone developed my genesis powers, which are basically my abilities from the good side of my soul. And not just that, but when I harness the power of the stone, I actually turn into an angel! Sometime later I found another stone, but this one was red. With it, I developed my neon powers, and this gave me the power to transform into a demon. These two stones are ancient gems known as the Heart Stones, and will only give power to those who possess an extremely rare genetic code known as the NGE gene. Not only that, but when using both stones at the same time, grants me the ability to transform into Neon Genesis Evangelion, a mixture of both the good side of my soul as well as the dark side. Months after learning about my new life, my creation, Evil Darkness, reappeared, swearing to rule the world. Luckily enough, I had the power to stop him, but... Let's just say that I wasn't quite ready to take him on. The first time I defeated him was indeed by pure luck, because I was really close to being defeated myself. But he fled and seemed quite astonished at how I handled him. I was pretty surprised myself, I didn't even use the heart stones. In addition to all this, you might be wondering why I'm a Moonhog and what exactly a Moonhog is. Well, when I was 15, I was kidnapped by some cloaked figures and got taken to a place called Point of Birth. There is absolutely nothing there but temples and, oddly enough, space and time do exist. I found out that I was a Moonhog in a dream I had when I was younger, where a female hedgehog, which looked a bit like I am now, spoke to me, telling me that I was the Moonhog now. I had no idea what it meant until then. The woman that spoke to me was Luna Dea the Moonhog, the first Moonhog to ever exist. She died 15 years ago at the time in an incident where a certain sun and moon were about to collide killing her and the original Sunhog, Soli Deus, and their success in avoiding this. You see, as a Moonhog, I can control the rotation and translation of the universe's moons, and in avoiding their collision, Luna Dea and Solidius both passed away due to their gravity being out of control. Come to think of it, I have no idea how nothing happened to any of the moons before I knew all of this. But that's not all. I'm part of a group called the Galaxy Hogs, hedgehogs with the powers to control specific parts of the universe and it was my partners the ones who took me to point of birth to explain all this to me. Anyway, enough of that story, let's move on to my friends. This is April Jane the Hedgehog. I met her back when we were both little babies in crisp flame preschool. She was my best and only friend, other than her cousin, November, but uh, we'll get to her later. Anyway, April and I were best of friends, and it was fate that we met. I was playing tag with some kids and she was alone on the swings when we crashed, and <laughs> the rest is history. She and November left about a few years after we met, but back then I had no idea why. We met again back when I was 12, April had moved back to Laird Tab, but November wasn't with her. She even moved back into the same house she once lived in, but with her aunt and uncle, her older brother Cole, and her younger sister Shale. It was odd to not see her parents. Well, as it turns out, April and November had gone to the underworld and were living a war between Grim Reapers and demons. April's parents and November's mother fighting on the Shinigami side, and November's father fighting on the demon side. It was in that war that April lost both her parents and November lost her mother. April's actually also the heir to the throne of the underworld, making her a princess. April and November didn't exactly end on good terms. You see, before they left for the underworld, April accidentally cut out November's eye with her scythe, and the once two loving cousins were never the same again. But now that April came back to Lyric Tab, she and I became great friends again, and after a year, actually started dating, and we're a very happy couple now. This is Dylan Eugene, the wolf from Salopolis City, and this is Ranku the Hedgehog II from Dadwick City. I mentioned them both because I actually met them both around the same time. Back when I was 13, I entered the singing competition held by a guy named Spaz. It's actually been quite a while since I've heard from him. Anyway, I entered the competition and so had Eugene. So, how does Ranku fit in? Well, he was one of the judges. As I finished my performance, I generally got positive feedback, but I heard a comment from Eugene that wasn't exactly pleasant. 
I apologized to him as if I had made him upset somehow, but it turns out that he was actually arguing with Ranku, not me. After a little confusion the two had over feedback towards me. I got to talking to both of them individually, and we all became really good friends in the end. So much so that I actually convinced them to move to Lyric Tab. This was actually quite easy with both of them liking to travel a lot. In fact, I didn't even ask Eugene after the contest, but actually on a journey he had gone on that I took part in. After winning the singing competition, I left back for Larry Tab Town, and a few months later, Eugene passed by in a van with some of his friends on their way to a concert, and I offered to help them get there. After that, he stuck around in Larry Tab with us. As for Ranku, he's an awesome musician, playing the guitar a lot, and I sometimes sing songs with him. He's actually pretty quiet and sometimes is absent, though we don't really know where he goes. Next up, we have Oni of the Spirit. Now, he has a story that's pretty odd in itself. Onia had died as a child, falling off a cliff trying to save a friend. He used to be a hedgehog, but after dying, woke up in a place called the Spirit World. He and the other spirits have no idea why they awoke there or why only certain spirits go there. Onia grew bored of the Spirit World and decided to roam the mortal world freely again, only this time as a spirit. He then learned that it was strictly prohibited to escape the Spirit World, as it could interfere with the real world. That or something else could go wrong in the process of exiting the Spirit World. And as it was said, it happened. When Onia exited the spirit world, he somehow ended 500 years before his time. He wandered the world that was kinda new for him for some time, before meeting April and befriending her, thus befriending me. He's gotten his own place here in Lyric Tab ever since. Now we have these two, Cesar Ramos and Des the Hybrid. I met these two when there was an evil threat about to change the world and its history forever. I was outmatched, but along came these two to help me out. Or, uh, rather for me to help them out. They were actually fighting against this threat before I was. After resolving the conflict, Sathor wanted to stay in Lyric Tab Town as he claims that it's much calmer than Croywen City, the place where they're both from. I never really knew what the deal with those two was. All I know is that they had known each other way before I met them. Sathor actually seemed to live a normal life before meeting Dez and I though, as to where Dez is all the opposite. Dez has apparently never had a normal life. He, like Sathor, was at one point a human. As a baby, however, experiments were performed on him, genetic combination and cloning. They combined his genes with those of a hedgehog, however, to do this, he had to be stolen. His parents were murdered in the process, and after the success of whatever project they were doing with Dez, they left him with his uncle, who at Dez's age of 12 was also killed, only this time by Dez's enemy. He lived with Cesar and his family for a while, before heading out and tracking his guy down. Dez ran off with his super speed after defeating his enemy after we met. Off to an island in the region, currently known as Dez Island, named after Dez after he saved the hybrids that inhabited the island from another threat. He lived there for a while before moving to Lyric Tab with us, and he goes back from time to time when he wants to visit or just get away from us. Last but not least, we have Lucky the Cat. I met Lucky around the time I met Dez and Cesar, but I got to know Lucky better in fewer time. Lucky was a stray cat, passing by Lyric Tab Town one night. I saw her resting on a branch in a tree in Larry Tap Park and invited her back to my place to stay, which April didn't really like. She treated me like an owner and like she was my pet before she got back on her feet and actually finally got a place of her own here in Larry Tap. She's originally from Croywen City, as are Cesar and Dez. However, Lucky's parents weren't murdered or anything of the sort. Lucky knows nothing of them. She lived in an alleyway all by herself with no family, growing up with only one friend, her Pichu which she fully evolved into Raichu before letting it free. Lucky's speed matches that of Dez's, if not that she's faster and often competes with him in many things, not only speed. Together, the eight of us are the Lunaticos, a group fighting to save the world against evil, most notably the Demonic. Oh yeah, the Demonix. Well, I don't know much about the Demonix myself, or what they do when they're not trying to take over the world, but what I do know is because of what I've learned myself, or what my friends have told me. How they met, I'm getting off of a certain source. So, I explained a bit about Evil Darkness. When he was created, the machine that my friend and I were using concentrated his energy on me for some odd reason, and took a part of my soul to give to him, so he would be able to live. Evil Darkness himself isn't exactly a ghost, if not just a living embodiment of the dark side of my soul. The bigger part, anyway. You see, this is how things work when it comes to souls. We have both souls and hearts. Contrary to popular belief, the only use hearts have is keeping us alive. If a heart stops, we die, plain and simple. But our souls are what give us our personality, our feelings. Without souls, we'd just be zombies, not caring about anything at all. But you can't have a yin without a yang. 
If you have a soul, you have to have a good side and a dark side. It's impossible to have just one or the other, but you can't concentrate either one. And that's the catch to Evil Darkness. Being a soul, he has a smidge of good in him. After he destroyed everything around him, he flew to a place known as Chaos City, an area which never stops raining, full of tall grass and debris everywhere. Chaos City wasn't always like this, however. A long time ago, this destroyed city was once known as Cosmo City, a very nice place where it had nice weather all year long. People would often visit just to spend their vacations and the like, but one fateful day, horrible creatures attacked the city and everyone was forced to leave, somehow causing a change in climate and destroying all the buildings in the city. But what does all this have to do with each other? Well, you see, when Evil Darkness arrived at Chaos City, he felt... lonely. The cold-blooded creatures almost match Evil Darkness' strength, but he managed to defeat them, but never befriend or ruled them. The good part of his soul needed a companion, so, with his aura, he created a small creature that he called Sankrat. He and Sankrat used the debris of the city to build Chaos Castle, the only structure in Chaos City, where Evil Darkness proclaimed himself as king. But with a place so big, Evil Darkness and Sankrat felt small and somewhat lonely themselves. So, Evil Darkness spawned more creatures like Sankrat and dubbed those creatures Nightmares, having Sankrat as his main nightmare. That's where his good side comes in. Although Evil Darkness feels no compassion towards others, he does towards very specific people. Among Evil Darkness's abilities is the power to steal souls. If he steals someone's soul, he becomes more powerful. Evil Darkness was also born with a part of my genetic code, along with the NGE gene. However, he doesn't exactly transform into Neon Genesis Evangelion when harnessing the power of the Heartstones. He transforms into Eternal Darkness, an enormous creature that is completely dark and extremely powerful. That's why he wants to absorb my soul, so he can be complete and have the ultimate power within him. Aside from Evil Darkness, we have other Demonics, such as November. Remember her? Yep. One of my childhood friends fighting for the other side. November was always a shy girl and was April's best friend as children. But she really liked being around me as well. Apparently after the Underworld War was over, November's father banished her as he no longer needed her. She awoke in a rainy and dark place, alone and afraid. November was attacked in this place by fearsome creatures, but was saved by a character covered in shadows. She passed out during her salvation and awoke in a room with her savior. She must have thought for some reason that I had saved her, for as she passed out, she muttered my name. And the figure brought her to his home, as apparently they both knew me. The figure proposed that she stay after she showed disgust at hearing about April. The figure introduced itself as Evil Darkness. November lives in Chaos Castle with Evil Darkness and the Nightmares, whereas the Nightmares refer to her as Mother. Both November and Evil Darkness developed romantic feelings towards one another, only trusting each other and no one else other than Sankrad. November, like April, also has herself her own scythe, however, she prefers to use her demon powers to combat, as her scythe reminds her of her mother's death. In reality, November may be the only member of the Demonix that isn't evil, if not only a part of the group because of her affection towards evil darkness, as it's also noted that she dislikes every other member. Next we have Evil Clone, Eugene's... uh... Evil Clone. <laughs> evil Clone originated by a can of soda that contained Eugene's saliva. Other than being really evil or cold-hearted, he's just a prankster and likes ruining things for everyone else, most notably Eugene himself without a motive whatsoever. I met him when we went on that trip to that concert, but he seemed like an okay guy at the time. He was presumably recruited by Evil Darkness when he realized that he was outmatched by all the Lunaticos at the time. He seems to be quite loyal to E.D., often being his right-hand man and trying to be a friend to him, though it's unknown how Evil Darkness really feels about his follower. This is Uknar, another clone only this time of Ranku, who originated on one of Ranku's journeys. He somehow achieved his form in a volcano, using a part of Ranku himself, fusing with dark matter. They're polar opposites, sans gender. Like Evil Clone, though, he hangs out with his counterpart from time to time, only to annoy him. Another recruit for the Demonix, after seeing the outnumber from the Lunaticos, Uknar tends to be more involved and interested with his team, as opposed to Ranku and his. This is Dino, a spirit, as is Onia. He and Onya were rivals back in the spirit world. Dino tried to corrupt Onya, wanting him to be an evil spirit and join a gang they had in the spirit world. Onya obviously rejected the offer after making friends that protected him. When Onya escaped the spirit world, Dino followed, eventually ending up with him back in time. He went his own way after being defeated, just looking for a way to get back to the spirit world. He was also recruited for the same reasons as the aforementioned. This here is Drogon, and he is yet another clone of the team, this time of Caesar, only with a twist. 
He's not a biological clone, if not a half-cyborg. He's programmed with a synthetic soul which powers him up, giving him a personality and motive, yet he has no feelings. It's said that he tracked down evil darkness with his soul radar which he himself designed and installed into his system. He mistook evil darkness's soul for my own, and ED was able to overpower Drogon, forcing him to be his follower. It's assumed that he was built by Dread before his artificial intelligence took over. Speaking of Dread, he's a cloning experiment made on Dez back when he was a baby. They apparently cloned the already genetically altered Dez instead of having two separate experiments. Being genetically altered, he transported it out of the science facility and raised himself in evil, thinking that the world turned its back on him. Remember that guy that killed Dez's uncle? Yup, that was this guy. That guy that I helped Dez and Sazar defeat? This guy. He also has the affinity to take over the world. They said that he teamed up with Evil Darkness and the Demonix after finding out that Dez had become a member, so that his chances of destroying him would be greater, and have a greater opportunity to take over the world. Though it's Dread the Demonic that Evil Darkness trusts the least, for he feels that once they take over the world or when the chance is present, Dread would betray him. As for the last Demonic, Unlucky is a soul clone. Dread created her to prove his worth and loyalty to Evil Darkness, seeing that there was one lunatic that had no counterpart, Lucky. Similar to Evil Darkness, Unlucky was created using the dark side of Lucky's soul. Unlucky really has nothing against Lucky, but is filled with rage and is naturally evil, so that's just how she is with everyone. Unlike Lucky's speed, it's not that Unlucky's slow per se, but she can stop time, more notably when Lucky and Dez are around as they're the fastest members of the opposing group. She finds peace in doing only one thing, and that would be traveling. She's actually quite the mystery, often doing things on her own account, but being loyal to Evil Darkness as lucky as to me. Over the course of years, many battles against the Demonics have been fought, saving the world from them numerous times. Now you pretty much know the who, what, where, why, and how about our world, and us in general. But that's not all our lives as Lunaticos are about. Come on down to Larry Tab Town and see exactly what it is that Lunaticos do when they're not fighting the Demonics and saving the world against evil. See you then!